Hi, I'm Dr. John. I want to thank you all for submitting questions for me to go over, and I'd be happy to go over those questions. What type of implants do you use? As far as breast volume enhancement goes, silicone and saline implants make up the majority of what type of implants can be placed to make the breast larger. Natural augmentation with fat grafting is also a great alternative for people who don't really want to use an implant. I think it's worth talking as well about what some of the differences are between saline and silicone implants. Am I a candidate for a breast augmentation? It starts with what's best for the patient. I think it's so important to find a customized solution for each individual patient. Patients have totally different desires, totally different goals, and I want to take the time to get to know my patients and understand what their desires are so I can best deliver what's best for them. And a big part of that is talking about the differences between saline and silicone implants in addition to natural fat augmentation. What is the difference between saline and silicone implants? Saline implants tend to look a little bit more prominent. People call it a little bit more artificial of a look. So a natural breast has about 40% of the volume in the upper half of the breast and 60% of the volume in the lower part of the breast so that it doesn't look quite like a round ball. A saline implant does look a little bit more on the rounder side, so it looks more prominent in a bra. It can be a little bit more attention grabbing. Silicone implants tend to look more natural. They tend to feel more natural as well. Saline implants are cheaper, but I don't really recommend people choose an implant based on the cost, but rather what is going to really bring joy to their lives. Where is the incision location? And the most common locations are at the breast fold, in the armpit, and around the areola. And there's different reasons to choose different incision placements. Essentially, the breast fold incision is the most typical because it allows me to correct the most issues that can arise with breast augmentation. So what I mean by that is everyone has asymmetries, whether it's facial asymmetries, breast asymmetries, um, etc. So there are always differences in nipple position, in where the breast folds are, in the amount of breast volume, the length of the breast themselves. And using an inframammary fold incision, I can correct a lot of these issues or at least significantly improve them. I do also use a videoscopic approach, um, making an armpit incision, having complete visualization and allowing very nice pocket creation. But if there are those type of asymmetries, I just can't improve them as much as I can through a breast fold incision. Placing a um, incision around the areola is more typically what I do when I'm doing a breast lift as well. Will breast implants have to be replaced? The answer is yes. And a good rule of thumb is 10 years is a good rule of thumb for how long the implants should last before they have to be replaced. Will implants affect the ability to breastfeed? Ultimately, I guess it depends a little bit on the technique, but the technique I use places the implant not only deep to the breast tissue, but deep to the muscle, which provides a lot of safety from avoiding anything that would alter the ability to breastfeed. What is recovery like? It depends a little bit as far as what details there are with the patient. For example, whether or not she has breastfed, and also what size she wants to go to. So in general, the larger the size difference, the more the pain is. And a woman who has not breastfed yet typically has a little bit more pain than women who have already gone through that breast stretch. What I tell patients is three to five days of pain can be challenging, but manageable. Women get through it all the time. But it's nice to kind of have that time to dedicate to yourself and to focus on recovery. It's nice to have help for two to three days, uh, just because in the beginning you'll have some soreness, kind of basic tasks, moving your arms will uh, be uncomfortable. So if you can have help for those first couple of days, it's nice, but it, I wouldn't say it's a requirement. 
What are the risks and complications of a breast augmentation? General complications include a risk of bleeding and infection, but with meticulous technique and gentle care, those risks can be dramatically reduced. And thankfully, we haven't really found that to be a dramatic issue with breast augmentation. Another risk involves scar tissue formation, or what can be called capsular contracture. That's when scar tissue develops around the implant. But again, with gentle technique and also the use of some technology, specifically something called a Keller funnel, really dramatically reduces the risk of that developing. And I use that with all breast augmentations. And basically what a Keller funnel is, it allows me to do a no touch technique. It allows me to put the implant in without having the implant touch any skin or any material that can contribute to that scar tissue or capsule. What would my breasts look like if I choose to have the implants removed in the future? Essentially, they would look like the breasts would look as if they never had augmentation. So breasts age over time, they lengthen, the nipples can fall in position, and with the implant removed, essentially the breast would take on pretty much its position of what it would look like if nothing was ever done, for the most part. A lot of women who do choose to have implants removed over time, typically will get a lift just to kind of compensate and improve for those changes that happen with age. Are there alternatives to breast implants? We do have a great alternative and that is fat grafting. And it can be a great two-in-one procedure for patients who are good candidates for fat grafting. So what fat grafting is, is I perform liposuction of other parts of the body and use that fat. I purify it, prepare it, and then re-inject it into the breast in a design that is desirable for the patient, whether that's giving upper pole volume, lateral detail, or just giving overall volume to the breast itself. And also, patients enjoy the benefit of having the liposuction or reduction of the fat in problem areas or areas where they don't want it. I'd like to thank you all for asking these great questions, and I'd like to also encourage you to keep asking great questions, and we'll be happy to keep answering them. Have a great day.